Hello, Akron Public School students. My name is Roxia Boykin, and I am here today to read a wonderful book to you about a physician who actually came to Akron, Ohio from Kenya in Africa. I am a nurse. Although I'm retired now, I had the wonderful opportunity to actually work with Dr. Banyo uh, when I was employed. And my name is Dr. Rhonda Hilton. I am an assistant professor at Kent State University. And basically what I do is teach undergraduate students who want to be teachers. So I teach future teachers. And we are so excited to be here with you today and to read this book to you. So, Banyo Banyo, the true story of a brave boy from Kenya. It's written by Vanita Oschlanger and illustrated by Kristen Blackwood and Mike Blanc. So to begin, we'd like to share with you just a little bit about the geography and what, where uh, Dr. Banyo actually came from. So this is Africa, the continent of Africa, and um, Kenya. And Dr. Banyo came from Kenya to the United States, first to Texas, and then he came to Akron, Ohio. After he had received his medical degree and had worked very hard, he was able to then go back to Africa to his home and start a clinic for his family and the individuals who lived in Kenya. This is a true story. It is about a brave boy from Kenya. Kenya is a country on the continent of Africa. This boy grew up to become a doctor. This is the story of Banyo Banyo, as he told it to me. My name is Banyo Banyo. My first name is the same as my last name, which may seem funny in the United States, but in Kenya, this is normal. I think I was born in September of 1962, but I am not sure. We didn't celebrate birthdays and not much about us was written down. I grew up in Western Kenya near Kisumu. There were five in my family and we were farmers. We ate mostly Ugali. This is a kind of meal ground from corn. You would call it cornmeal or cornbread. We were poor and sometimes hungry, but my father and mother worked hard and we learned to work hard too. We ate the food that we grew on our farm. We had brown cows and goats too. I had fun when I was growing up. We played soccer. We had no soccer ball, so we made one out of cloth and we sew that we sewed together. Then we stuffed it with whatever we could find. I also love to listen to stories told by my granny. She told us stories while smoking a long pipe. She told us stories of warriors, traditional dances and weddings. She would also tell horror stories about jaguars and lions and hyenas. When I got older, I thought granny told us those stories so she could go to sleep at night and not worry about us going out into the dark. Something sad happened when I was eight or nine years old. This sadness put a dream into my head. I had a baby sister named Akinyi. I, I helped take care of her. I loved her very much. When she was six months old, she got sick. Akinyi got very sick because the village didn't always have clean water to drink. Akinyi died because there was no doctor or nurse to care for her. When she died, I told myself that someday I would put a hospital in my village so that we could help children like Akinyi. That dream never left my head. School was important in my village. I knew if I was going to help my village, I needed to go to school. I walked 90 minutes each day to get to school. School cost $1 a year. When I was to go into seventh grade, my parents didn't have the dollar to send me that year. 
Since I couldn't go to school, I helped my mother. One day, she sent me to the shop in the village. The shop was like a general store where you could get sugar, salt, and other things for cooking. I rode there on a bike that was too big for me. I rode under the bar on the bike. In the shop, I met the man who owned the shop. He was also the principal of a school over the mountains. He knew my parents. This man asked me why I wasn't in school. I was afraid to answer him. In my village, everyone helps raise the children, not just your parents. I was afraid I would be in trouble. He asked me again and I told him the truth. I told him my parents didn't have enough money to send me. He asked me if I wanted to go to school and I told him it was important to me. He took me outside the door of the shop. He pointed to the Wanganga Hills. I craned my neck to see where he was pointing. The man said, that is where I teach. If your parents will let you, you can come to my school. It will cost you nothing. He told me how I could get there in two days walking. I rode home and told my mother what the principal had said. The next day, my mother went with me to the village to talk to the principal. We looked everywhere for him, but he had gone to the school. My mother asked me if I remembered how he had told me to get there. She asked me if I wanted to go. I told her I remembered all of his directions. I really wanted to go and learn more. I remembered Akinyi. My mother cried, but she packed me some things in a carton for me. My father was also sad but he knew I had to go if I wanted a better future. I set out the next morning early because I had to get to the first village before night came. I had no watch, but I knew time by where the sun was and how the shadows fell on the ground. I had to sleep at the village so I wouldn't be outside at night with the animals. I was wearing shorts. I had no shoes. The carton was on my head. I had two rivers to cross and neither one had a bridge. The first one was easy. Then I walked to the Nyadho. This river had flooded just one day before. Two people had drowned. I sat there on the steep bank afraid even to step in. I knew how to swim, but I might drop my carton and lose all my things. So I sat and waited for courage to come, but instead tears filled my eyes. Behind me was my home, my childhood too. Ahead lay my dreams and the man I would be. As I waited there, unable to move, some local people helped me to cross. They were helping some women who were coming from market with kids on their backs. All of us got across safely with the villagers help. As I walked, I saw lots of beautiful birds and the sky was blue like it always was. Monkeys were in the trees. I saw brown cows and goats. No one kept their cows or goats inside a fence. The animals would wander around all day and come home at night. Maybe they felt safe at home at night like we did. Maybe they had a granny who told them stories about the night. The principal had told me to stay in a village that had a fence around it for the first night. I found the village and the house where the people welcomed me in. They had very little food, so I told them I wasn't hungry. Instead, I went to sleep on their floor. The next day, I reached the village where the school was. The principal had said I would meet a woman selling milk in the center of town. She would take me to the school. I found her, but she said I would have to wait until she finished selling her milk. She gave me a banana that tasted so good. Oops. She took me to the school where I would go to seventh and eighth grade. The principal was proud of me because I showed him how important school was to me. I learned to love him very much. I was best at math, geography, and soccer. 
I made good friends. I met my mother each Sunday at a church. It took her two hours to walk from her home to this church. I found a short cut to the church that only took me five hours. Other kids from my school had families at the church too, so they went with me. We always ran the whole way. I did well enough in school to get to a Catholic boarding school for my high school years. Because I had good grades, I could attend for free. Even though I was far from my family and my village, they were happy for me because they knew I was beginning to see my dream come true. There were 600 boys at the school and I did well. The thing I remember most was that I got three meals every day. I was never hungry again. My teachers were from all over the world. One teacher was from Pennsylvania. I didn't know where Pennsylvania was, mm -hmm. but I knew it was in the United States, which meant it was far away. He helped me a lot. There was also a doctor who helped me keep my dream of becoming a doctor alive. I always remembered how helpless I felt when my sister died. When I finished high school and was ready to go to college, I sent letters to colleges and universities around the world asking if they would accept me. Finally, a college in Texas said they would pay for me to attend there. But first, I had to get money so I, so I could travel to the United States. I showed that letter to my father and told him I wanted to go to Texas. He laughed at me. He had no money to send me so far away, so all he could do was laugh. But he did something that really surprised me. He was the only person in our village with a radio. People came from all over to listen to news on his radio. He loved that radio. He sold the radio to help me get money for my trip. I rode my bike everywhere, showing people the letter and asking them to help me get the money to go to Texas to become a doctor. People gave money to help me. I worked jobs to get money too. In my village, there was a word that meant togetherness. That word was Harambe. I will never forget how everyone helped me. I knew that someday I would help them. Finally, I raised enough money for the flight. When I was 17, I flew on a plane to the United States. Then I flew on another plane to Texas. Then I, then I took a bus to Northwood College in Cedar Hills, Texas. I arrived with some clothes, a blanket, and $11. That was all, but it was enough. I still have that blanket today. In Texas, I continued my journey to become a doctor. I did well at the college. I studied hard. I also had time to play soccer. This time it was with a real ball. Then I was accepted into medical school. My dream was coming true. After three more years of school, I graduated and finally became what I promised my family and my village, a doctor. A hospital in Akron, Ohio gave me the opportunity to continue my medical training. I worked hard and after a few years, with the help of many others, I had enough training to do what I had promised when I left my home more than 15 years before, build a clinic in my home village. It would have a nurse and medical supplies. I named it after my mother. She died while I was in medical training. On the clinic, it says, Mama, Palista Banyo Memorial Health Center, established 2006. I go back to the clinic twice each year. I take young doctors and others to help me. We practice medicine. We also practice Harambe, togetherness. I would say to all children, follow your dreams. Don't let anything stand in the way. Others will help you if they see you are determined. But if you need courage, look inside yourself. You will find it there. And these are just pictures of the author and the illustrator and then um, Dr. Bonio and his blanket. When I was a boy, I only dreamed of becoming a doctor and helping the people in my village. I knew I had to get to the next village to go to school. I didn't know I would travel around the world to come back home. 
or that with each step someone would hold out a hand and help me to my next destination. But I knew if I kept on my path, someday my dream would come true. It happened for me. Now I can give back to my people. It can happen for you. When it does, remember to give back to your people too. Banyo, banyo. We hope that it inspires you and encourages you to follow your dreams too. Thank you for listening to the story. Thank you.